Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Bingo! <laughs> We're back, one o'clock on a given Monday with Tawana Scott. And she is with Dietrich Insurance Company right here. And she's a vice president and she likes to look at cyber, cyber attacks and the like. <laughs> she's an expert in that area. So the title of our show here on Think Tech Tech Talks is Cyber Insurance to Help Protect Your Business. And this is really interesting because this is where the rubber meets the road. It is. Tawana, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So how'd you get into this? This is really interesting. So, you know, as, as insurance has evolved over the years, um, there became a need. And, and someone in their infinite wisdom said, you know what, let's solve that need. And, and that product was born. And, and so what we've done is we've uh, worked with some, some other reinsurers to come up with a product to protect businesses in the event um, they have a data breach or cyber attack. Yeah, more and more these days. More and more. It's so more and more. tell us what the, the landscape is like these days. I mean, I, my, last time I looked at this and it affected some websites that I was developing, there was a cell of, what do you want to call it, hackers in Vladivostok who targeted me. And they try to knock all my all my sites down, and they succeeded. Wow! Over and over again, I would put them up; they would knock them down. They liked me. <laughs> <laughs> so that that was a long time ago. But how is it now? How is it evolved? Who's doing what? See, I don't. I think you know that it's that it's. I think now it's a myth that it's isolated to that part of the, the world. Um, I think it's a worldwide issue, and there's not one group that is solely responsible for the hacks. Um, I think, again, this is the full-time job of a lot of hackers. This is what they do for a living, to hack security um, systems, whether it be small mom-and-pop type um, or businesses or, you know, your, you know, apples of the world. Um, so, or yeah, Sony. Or Sony, right? <laughs> um, and, or Facebook, right? Yeah, sure. And so what happens is this is what these this is what these people are doing for a living, and they're making a lot of money, and business is good for them. How do they make the money? So I think what they what they end up doing is right once they kind of compromise the data, they use that data, and next thing you know, they sell you, the data. They sell the data. Um, so if they get all my data from say, what Facebook was a recent breach. Uh, they can sell that. They can on, sell your personal web, data on the dark yeah. web, um, and potentially steal your identity. Yeah, and, and yeah. I won't even know about it. And you won't even know about it'll, it. It'll and it'll take months or even years before I get any idea that I've been compromised. Potentially, yes, absolutely. Um, for for the, for us as individuals, that that's a huge, huge thing that your um, your identity can be out there for years and years, um, and just the cost to restore it um, can bankrupt you as an individual. Sure. I, you know, a stolen identity is a real hassle, too. It is a real hassle. I'm so thankful that I have not had uh, the experience that, uh, that I'm really grateful, but I do know some folks who have. And, you know, it, again, caught early, you can mitigate and do a lot of things, but once you're knee-deep in it, it, it can take a long time to recover. Well, let's, let's begin with the individual. How do I know I've been hacked? How do I know I've been compromised? So the best what way, are the telltale signs? The best way is if you monitor your own credit reports, mm -hmm. right? You can get notifications from the three bureaus when um, new credit is taken out under your name and social security number. That That's available. Um, you can also partner, um, if you have credit cards, some of the credit card companies um, like Discover, um, they can put your, you can um, access them and, and authorize them, and they kind of monitor those dark webs for if your social security number pops up on the oh, dark web. Oh, how um, interesting. Yeah. I was going to ask you if they had algorithms back there to figure out that my, you know, the charge I just made in Albania, where, where I haven't been, <laughs> is a bad charge. Yeah. But it goes further than that. Yeah. Because they go on the dark web themselves. Yep. yep. And they look for my credit yep. card. They look, they they're looking for your credit they... card. They're looking for your social security number. Um, I had gotten an email from Discover um, sometime early this year asking if I wanted to, to take part in that, right? And I'm thinking, wow, look at this company being proactive. No extra charge to me. It's just because I'm a, a Discover company, a customer. So, you know, I'm sure Visa and MasterCard and American Express have something similar, I'm sure. Um, and if they don't, I'm sure at some point in the near future they probably will. It's a great selling feature. 
Um, but yeah, so doing things like that. But the biggest thing I think is monitoring your credit report um, yeah, yeah. and getting those notifications when credit is taken out in your in and, your name. And reading your and, credit card and bills. And reading your, your bills, right. And my favorite one is the dollar half one. <laughs> it appears mysteriously, right? Yeah. And you say, hmm, and it's got a very generic name to it. Yeah. But every month, a dollar half, every month. Yeah. And then there's another one and another one. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes people don't even pay attention, right? So, you know, and, and, and hackers, you know, they're almost like artificial intelligence, like they are learning, right? So be all, before, you know, you think 10, 15, 20 years ago, they just throw on a $1,000 charge, right? immediately and hope for the best, right? And immediately that is, you know, a red flag and the company would shut it down. Now yeah. they do something like fifty dollars. You know, and if they've yeah. got, you know, three hundred thousand names, it's a lot of money. fifty dollars yeah. is a lot of money. Yeah, but yeah. it's something that you or I wouldn't even notice a fifty dollar transaction. Right. So if I know that Facebook has been hacked for X millions or tens of millions of of profiles, uh, and I, and I figure I'm I'm a Facebook person. Right. Uh, they got a certain amount of information on me. Uh, what do I do? What can I do? Is there anything I can do? So you can, you can again, be proactive with that credit report. Um, you can reach out to uh, Facebook if you think your, your data has been compromised or you've gotten um, some issues. You can reach out to them for assistance. You can um, contact any credit card companies, of course. You can reach out to, your, to the three credit bureaus and, and talk to them as well. To, okay. to help you get that off of there. But you should be proactive. I mean, a lot of people, they, they know that Facebook has been <clears throat> compromised. They know they're on Facebook. They say, well, it wasn't me. Right. I, I don't have to worry about this. The chances of them coming from me are minimal, so I don't do anything. Right. And, that, and, that, and that's exactly right, right? Um, people will say that. Oh, you know what? I didn't, my, my data hasn't been compromised, but it, it has. You know, one of the things I saw Facebook saying was, you know, recommending people change their passwords, right? Something simple as that, just going and changing your password, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's little things like that. Even when some of the major companies get hacked, um, changing your pass username and password, sometimes you have to change both. It's not just the, the password, it's the username too. Yeah. So again, being proactive, I think, is the best way to mitigate. A, a, a stitch in time, uh, yeah. Exactly. So let's move to corporations now. <coughs> Large or small, mom and pops or, or Sony. Um, what are the telltale signs for them? How do they become aware they've been hacked? Well, this, as you mentioned before the show, there are two things. One is you get hacked and you, you know, your data is compromised. And the other is you, you get a full-on attack yeah. so and you, you can't do business. So you get, you get the data breach, um, which is basically the, that data being compromised, right? And then you get the cyber attack, which is, which is the, the one that can kind of take you out of business for a while. Um, can't use your computer and things like that. Um, a lot of um, IT company uh, departments, what they have is they have uh, software and virus protection that will alert them to when their systems are being uh, compromised. Um, also, you got to educate your staff, right? You know, my company, we get thousands of emails in a day, right? So you got to talk about uh, different types of emails so that you don't click on phishing links or you don't uh, inadvertently bring that malware into your system. So being, again, that proactive, having IT folks that um, are subject matter experts mm -hmm. in this field mm -hmm. um, that kind of keep up with the trends and, and what's happening of late to combat that. It's always changing. It's and always you have to be changing. Very conservative. It's, it always, again, I said these guys, these hackers, it's a full-time job for them, right? And so, as as we get smarter in terms of protection, they get to get more sophisticated in terms of hacking, right? Yeah, and it's not just the technology; it's it's the social engineering. That's absolutely right. Yeah, my wife my wife worked for a bank a long time, and uh, they told her you can't send emails from the bank. Yeah. And we don't want you to go browse on the browser. Just just do what the program on the on the computer wants you to do. That's Absolutely, and, that, and that's why, right? Because back then, you think about it, right? We didn't really know what the internet was. We didn't know what the potentials were. Um, same thing with email, right? We didn't know what the potential, you know, was to be hacked and things like that. And now we do. So, you know, yeah. now, now employers don't restrict internet usage in the manner that it did um, 10 years ago even a year ago, right? Um, same thing with email. You can, you can, you know, a lot of people use their work email um, for personal use, right? But it's just a matter of, again, being proactive and having that IT protection within uh, your network. So the phishing thing you mentioned earlier, I mean, what are, what are the, the, the signs of danger? The, 
you know, the things I, I should be watching. So when you, get, when you get emails, so I would, normally you'd say, you get emails from unknown parties, right? Oh, those days are gone, right? Mm -hmm. Now, now it, it's an email from me, right? It's an email from your wife, right? And you just think, oh, it's my wife, right? Um, but they've cloned it, they've done all these things, and, and what's inside of the body of the email is a link that they want you to click on. And when you click on that link, that is what invites the, the malware or the Trojan or the worm or the virus into the network. Right, and what shows on the screen is not actually What's the behind, link that's, that's behind That's exactly it. right. So it looks like she's telling you, honey, can you pick up uh, <laughs> milk? And, uh, and, and this company has a, is having a, this store is having a big sale. Click this link for the coupon, right? <laughs> right. And so, you know, you're rushing around. You're not really paying attention. And, you know, you don't think, oh, well, first of all, who has coupons for milk, right? <laughs> Whatever. That's yeah. neither here nor there, right? And next thing you know, you've clicked on it and you've invited that um, that malware into your system. Yeah, and, and, and silly you, you weren't watching. And you know, the thing about it is um, your IT department can actually pinpoint which terminal or you know, system that, yeah. that uh, opened up that email yeah. and, and let it in. Yeah, I was, I was telling you about the shipping company in, <laughs> somewhere in Scandinavia and all of a sudden their screens had a joke on it and everything was down and everything turned off and and the whole company was that was a global company. It all turned off, and they wound up spending weeks um, in you know in kind of a brain session to try to figure out how to what happened and how to how to fix it up. But they were sloppy, right? And that was the thing. I mean, I'm sure that heads rolled on that, and they and they I'm sure they're much safer now. Absolutely. And they'd be a hard target now. Yeah. Um, because of the disaster that took place, they they lost an incredible amount of money, hundreds yeah. of millions because yeah. of this. Yeah. And you know what happens is a lot of times, um, especially some of the larger companies, they just kind of think it can't happen to me, right? I've got the you know the the, the top IT folks in my on my staff, right? My CIO knows everything, and you know, um, and so they think you know they spend all this money in in software and you know protection, and they think they, it can't happen to them. Right? Yeah. But like I said, I go back to my original statement. This is what these people do for a living, right? And, and they're, they're looking for ways to breach your, um, your security. And they and, love doing it. And that's the thing. When you love what you do, it's not really work. Yeah. Um, and, so, and so this is what ends up happening. So, so in addition to having all that protection and doing what you need to do, you also have to be proactive to monitor and watch what's happening within your system. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think people realize that it's not just a few people. There are not. many, 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 many people. And there are some state hackers, too, that work for governments yeah. who hack you. Um, and so there's a whole a multi billion, trillion dollar industry Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I, the chances of you escaping that completely in your life are minimal. No, I mean, we, I saw an FBI study where, you know, two thirds of Americans have say that they've been compromised, right? You think about think about how many American citizens there are, two-thirds of them have been compromised at some point. It's pretty scary. So on the uh, on the corporate side, just before we go to our break now, I, you know, what, what can we do? Certainly we're gonna, we're gonna warn our staff that, you know, be careful about phishing. Right. We're gonna get virus protectors against, you know, the known viruses, but that changes all the time. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna hire the best um, you know, cyber people we can find, but even that's really well. Not and when you've done all that, right? Yeah. Now you want to buy insurance, right? What, what you want to buy insurance just in case. Right. It's just it's just like insuring your property or your car, right? Just in case something happens, I want to be protected. Well, and the losses uh, can be extraordinary, like they, that shipping company. They has. can put they you know when you think about that shipping company, right? Some of the the, the data breach and some of that information that they had to restore and things like that, that's covered under, a, that can be covered under a policy, yeah. right? And, you know, it's millions of dollars that they had to pay, but having to use your insurance for it, it's a small price to pay, Yeah, you know? And a few years ago, there were no insurance products out that would cover these risks, no? No. Um, unfortunately, uh, the, I think the cyber product has been uh, making its way to the market in probably the last... I'd say maybe five to ten years, um, and I can would think that it's going to continue to evolve sure. um, as, 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 as things change, yeah. and we, we get precedent, and we get legalization and legislation. I think the product will continue to evolve, as, as insurance does. Yeah. 
That's uh, Tawana Scott. She's a vice president with Dietrich Insurance Company right here in Honolulu, and she's, uh, her specialty is uh, cyber terrorism and cyber attacks <laughs> on business organizations and the insurance you can get to cover those risks. And right after this break, we're going to talk about today, what those products are today and what they feel like and sound like and the kind of coverage you can get. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. When I was growing up, I was among the one in six American kids who struggle with hunger. And hungry mornings make tired days. Grumpy days. Bleh kind of days. But with the power of breakfast, the kids in your neighborhood can think big and be more. When we're not hungry for breakfast, we're hungry for more. More ideas. More dreams. More fun. When kids aren't hungry for breakfast, they can be hungry for more. Go to hungeris.org and lend your time or your voice to make breakfast happen for kids in your neighborhood. Okay, if you don't remember, we're in Think Tech Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel, and this is Tawana Scott next to me. She's the vice president of Dietrich Insurance Company. And we're talking about cyber insurance today to help protect your business. Really important at a time when it seems to be growing like all over the place. It is growing like weeds. Yeah, Absolutely. Like weeds. Yeah. So we, we, Dietrich specifically has a policy, has a, an endorsement that we add to our policies um, to cover the data breach and the cyber attack. It's a, it's a two-fold product because the coverages are different. Um, what happens in a data breach is not the same as a cyber attack. So you distinguish attack. that for the insurance. Exactly. So data breach versus attack. Versus attack. Um, we kind of define it in the policy language. Um, but some of the things that the data breach covers is, you know, because this has gotten to be so great a concern, all states including Hawaii, have enacted notification laws. So when there's a data oh, yeah. breach, there are certain requirements that the, the state mandates a business owner to do. Um, interestingly enough, um, I think before these uh, laws, it overall only 33% of small businesses ever um, only thirty. Only thirty-three percent actually notified. Customers. They wouldn't say anything, and then, yeah. and then the poor guy would find out the hard way. Well, because you know what happens is your reputation is at stake as a business owner, right? Think about it. If you knew ABC company couldn't uh, protect your information, would you do business with them? Probably not, not these days. right? But back a few years ago, as you say, most businesses would say, would kind of ignore it. Yeah. Hope it went away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and they wouldn't say a word because they absolutely. thought that the, the balance of concern is it's worse that people know than if they don't know. Right, exactly. Now those laws, now and those laws with the general them. feeling of the public, too, exactly. you, you can't do that. You exactly. have to tell. Exactly. You have yeah. to tell people, right? So the, so the data breach will cover um, the, the notification requirements. It will cover fines and penalties. Oh, it, it, you mean if you breach the notification no, requirements? No. So, so the, the government says you have to do ABC. You have to do these type of requirements. So basically, you have to notify the people that this has happened. Yeah. You have to tell them to what extent the possible damage is. So they got your credit card numbers and maybe something else. Or if it's a hospital, they got your social security number. So you have to tell them what could possibly uh, be affected, right? Yeah. And then you have to give them um, identity restoration coverage. So you have to help them if their identity is stolen. Uh, in the notice, this is all in the, in note. the notice. And then you have to monitor their, so nothing happened today. You patronize this store or this business and nothing happened to you. Well, you, well, you have to give them monitoring of their credit reports for, usually it's up to a year. Um, but again, that's a cost, right? Okay, right, so yeah. I see, that. so the insurance we're talking about on the notification side is, I, I notify people and then I have an obligation under the state law to, uh, not to do federal, some other, not, not federal yet. There's there's pending legislation at the federal level, mm -hmm. um, but I think you know the states kind of you know acted quickly um, to get those laws yeah, passed, and it is good for them. Um, so so yeah, so you, there's a, there's a certain level that has to be done, and there's an expense, and you know think about sure. all that notification. So if I have to let you know and, and help you. 
clear it up and all that, that's going to cost the company cost, some money. Right. But the different notices have different requirements. Uh, so the exposure to the company is different in different states. Exactly. So there must be different rates in different states. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and it's also, you know, the, 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 I think the primary thing with regards to the cyber is the potential for loss, right? So somebody who's a, a retailer, for example, has a huge um, data breach potential, sure. right? Because sure. people want the credit card numbers, whereas somebody like a financial institution is more of a cyber attack. Right? People want to get into your system, investment companies and things like that. So the level of um, your exposure is different uh, based on your business, and that will affect your costs as well. Yeah, wow, okay. Right? And, yeah. they, and they, have, uh, you know, they have markets out there, insurance companies out there, that just write those products for those what we call higher hazard types of risks. So well, those hazards could be huge. They could be huge. And, and you know, and some insurance companies, we, we need to get reinsurance on that. Because you have an exposure. Or you have yeah, a big yeah. exposure. You know, uh, you know, banks get compromised and there's a lot of money and a lot of risk at stake. So, um, so traditional insurance companies won't, will not tend to insure those types of companies that have huge uh, software exposures. Um, we're looking for, you know, the mom and pops, the, the vanilla, um, I wouldn't say people that don't have an exposure because everybody does, but we're we're looking for things that can be managed and, and managed, that, that are right. not going to put us. If, if the exposure money. is in the billions, right? That's that's a hard policy to write. That's exactly because because there's so many there's so many variables that go into underwriting it, um, and you need a, a more specialized uh, expertise to do that kind of work. So Dietrich is carrying this kind of, and we're still talking just about notice. Yes, uh, Dietrich is carrying this kind of insurance. So, yep would cover, say, a retailer yep. who, uh, you know, say at Alamoana, somebody who was yep. selling things Absolutely. and, and uh, his, his records were compromised. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and then you reinsure because the exposure yes. is beyond what beyond. you would like to cover Absolutely. your own self. Because, again, you know, depending upon the, the uh, you know, using Alamoana as an example, let's say if there's something with Alamoana's Wi-Fi that's compromised, and, and all these stores in Alamoana get affected, right? Oh, <laughs> right. Oh, the, the, wow. the dollar amounts that you're talking about are huge, and yeah. so, yeah, insurance insurance companies protect themselves with reinsurers, so, yeah, we do reinsure. they got to do that. Mm -hmm. So is this uh, <clears throat> expensive, uh, you know, like, you know, most insurance, most insurance for a small business or retail, I mean, you have comprehensive general liability, you have property and fire, mm -hmm. uh, you may have uh, employment type insurance. Yep. But that, uh, I guess those are the three main Those categories. are probably the primary three, the primary property one, yeah. GL and workers' compensation for their employees. Um, and then, you know, no, this is not real expensive. I mean, it's, not expensive. it's, a, few, it's a few hundred dollars for, small, for lower limits. Um, we do it kind of based on the limit that you protect, uh, uh, select. We offer three limits at Dietrich um, for the, um, the data breach, and then we offer uh, one limit for the cyber attacks. Well, let's go to the cyber attack. So the cyber will cover recovery, replacement, and repair. So your your system is is damaged, right? After usually after a cyber attack, you've got some system damage, and and that's the kind of stuff that the the that policy covers. It covers your you know again the recovery, the data recovery, um, any repair to the system, and any replacement it helps you replace the data that's lost. Uh, things well, like sometimes that. you got to key it all in. You got to get it from other sources, maybe even Absolutely. paper sources. Yep. And you got to have a battery of people who are working yep. night and day exactly. to put the data back. And those back are some in. of the expenses expensive. that can be can yeah. be covered. Yeah. Yeah. It, it can be expensive, and you know, and these are the things again that that companies don't think. Oh, I don't think I have an exposure. You know, a lot of people are now outsourcing um, in in the in the private industry uh, world. You know, and a lot of the the laws state that if you own the data you are responsible. So even if you outsource it, because you own the data, you're responsible for keeping it safe. Yeah. And, and that's why it's important um, for companies to understand uh, a little bit more about cyber in their state um, and reading contracts. You know, get that attorney involved in, in your contract uh, negotiations. Yeah, I mean, it'd be, if you didn't have, you didn't do the right thing within the company, have the qualified people, have the antivirus have the systems to deal with and to, you know, give you alarm bells when, exactly. when you've been attacked. Um, if you didn't have that, then you would be negligent in today's Absolutely. standard of care. Right? Absolutely. And, and, and those are the, the, you know, when you look at these policies, you know, we're not going to cover you. 
if you're not going to take an active approach to protecting your business, right? So if you're not going to put those things in place, um, and, it, and it's a morale hazard. Oh, I have insurance, so I don't got to worry about it, right? <laughs> well, you won't have insurance because the you know policy language comes into play, exclusions. We don't we don't want to insure things that we that because people don't want to protect their business, right? Yeah. It is still your business, and it's still your reputation. If you get hacked, oh, that's yeah. your reputation, and you know. You know, we we offer in our in our data breach and and the cyber attack, we all offer uh, a public relations sublimit, right? That that sure, will help you relations. help yeah. you get get back favorably in the marketplace, right? Which is back. huge. Yeah. It's 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 huge. You know, we we offer the you know the forensics forensics IT review to help people understand how did this happen, right? I've got the best technology. I've got the best of everything, and I still got hacked. How? So we, we offer that as well. For advice for next time. For advice for next time, yeah. Yeah, and then and then we offer third party. So we, this is just talking about first party, right? It's damage to your business, your work, your data. Um, we also offer oh, third party liability. liability. You, so it, this is with the attack, right? So somebody now sues you because you failed to secure oh, your fair network. Fair chance they will. Huh? Fair, in, in the United States, where we're so litigious, <laughs> fair chance. I say there's a highly likely chance that you you can be sued. Um, it just really comes down to the negligence. Uh, what did you do? What didn't you do? And and what the damages are of of the affected parties. Now, what about loss of income, loss of business income? We pay for that as well. <clears throat> it back. takes you a month to get back online yep. or whatever. Uh, you can pay me. We, we my will loss pay for the loss of, for the loss of, of business um, business use. Yep. Now, suppose I'm sloppy. <laughs> Define sloppy, Jay. Sloppy. I, I don't have uh, you know I don't have um, uh, antivirus. I I don't have a. Uh, a, a separate and distinct uh, cyber terrorism person in my, in my staff. I never tell um, you know, the people who work for me uh, that they should be careful about phishing. Um, I, you know, I do, I do it all wrong. Okay. You probably will not have insurance. You will so probably. Is that not because be you're going to look at me before you issue the insurance? So we do. After? We do ask some questions before, um, but normally it, because we just add it on as as a just a matter of reference, we just include it with all our quotes at low limits, and you can kind of buy up if you want to increase it. It's at the time of loss is when we look. So you know we have the, the team of claims experts that go out and they kind of let's see what happened and, and how did it all you know play out. And what happens is they can tell that you've never put any kind of antivirus software on, you never did any checks, you never did that, you never did that. And, and it could be excluded. It, it, the coverage, the claim could be denied um, because of that. Yeah, so, so somewhere there's a list of things I have to do. Yes. And uh, the, the carrier is going to tell me what those things are. So, so, so not a list of things per se, but there's a list of things that we will tell you what we're not going to cover. If right. these things happen, right. we're not going to pay your loss. Right. And well, that's just so in all kinds of insurance. All kinds it's of always, insurance. List of exclusions, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. you go through that and, and you um, see what those are, and that's what happens at the time of the loss. Beforehand, to some extent, we... we Make the assumptions that businesses protect themselves. Like you, you can't buy a computer today that doesn't have some form of antivirus built into it. Um, and again, we we assume that businesses are going to take the the appropriate measures to protect their business. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, because you guys, the businesses have skin in the game. I mean, a ton of skin in the game, right? Sure. You lose that reputation. I'd rather not have the loss at all. Exactly. You know, the insurance is only insurance. I'd like to. Never have the loss. Absolutely, you know. <laughs> it, it, I think I think what what we offer at Dietrich is what I like to call sleep at night insurance. Right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's enough that can protect you, um, especially if you're you know small to medium sized risk or a bigger risk that um, does a lot of protection. We can we can help you out as, as well. But if you if you have a major cyber exposure, you need a specialized marketplace for that. Yes. So one last question, Tawana, because we're almost out of time. And that is, where is this all going? You know, we talked before the show began about the changing nature of our world and so many risks we have, and certainly the changing nature of cyber terrorism and the changing nation, uh, nature of insurance products 
that covers cyber terrorism. Yeah. Can you comment on when you th where you think this is all going? I think that as the, 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 the world changes and we start to see case law and, and suits and precedents, I think that insurance policies will adopt, adapt to that as they have in the past, right? When I look at insurance from, you know, 100 years ago and how it's evolved today, we change as the market changes. Yeah. And, you know, there's enough millennials and younger folks out there coming on board um, to think outside the box and be creative and innovative. And that's what's going to change the industry is that innovation to foresee what's going to happen. That's what that's what we need to do. We need to be proactive against, against these uh, Cyber thugs. Yeah, the only thing for sure is change. I that used to say, true. plus ça change, plus la même. That means, you know, the more things change, the more they are the same. I don't say that anymore. Now I say, plus ça change, plus ça change. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I like you, that. Tawana. Thank you so much, Jay. Juana Scott. Thank right. you very much. Dietrich Insurance. Thank, Thank you very you. much. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs>